Welcome to WP Forms, the best WordPress contact form plugin on the market. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your first contact form by using the WP Forms plugin. WP Forms allows you to create beautiful and powerful forms in just minutes with our easy to use drag and drop form builder. Absolutely no coding required. With that said, let's jump right in. For this tutorial, we're going to start from the very beginning so let's first install and activate the WP Forms plugin. If you've already installed the plugin, you can skip to the next chapter. From your WordPress site's dashboard, go to the Plugins tab on the left, click the Add New button, and then click on the Upload Plugin button. Click the Choose File button, or drag the WP Forms zip file you downloaded from your WP Forms account, and then click on the Install Now button. Once the plugin has been installed and activated, go to the Settings page of WP Forms, and be sure to enter your license key, then verify it. Once your license key has been verified, we're all set to get started on our first form. From the left sidebar, click Add New. WP Forms comes with tons of different pre-made templates you can choose from to make the creation process even easier. If you choose a template, you can customize it by adding or removing different fields to make it suit your needs. You can either choose from any of the existing categories to browse the available templates, or use the search bar on the left side to write in keywords for a specific type of template and select it on the right when it appears. You can also add a name for your form by writing it in the text field at the top of the page. But if you'd like to create a form entirely from scratch, you can do that too. Select the blank form option to be taken into the form builder. WP Forms makes it incredibly easy to quickly set up your form. You can simply click and drag any field you see on the left side and drop it into the right to begin building your form. For this tutorial, I want to create a contact form where customers can submit their information along with any questions or comments they'd like to include. I'd also like to get more specific information from them, like how they heard about my website. If it was from a specific social media influencer, then who? So first things first, I'm going to click and drag the name field into my form. I'm also going to ask for their email address, phone number, and include a text box where they can write in a question or a comment if they'd like. Since I'm asking for both an email address and phone number, I'm going to add in a multiple choice field where they can choose the best way to reach them. I also want to know how they heard about my website, so I'm going to do two things. I'm going to add a drop down field so they can select from any of the available choices, and if they select something specific, I want them to be able to write in the answer themselves. So I'm going to add a single line text field for them to be able to do just that. Now that all of our fields are in place, Let's customize them. To customize a field, simply click on it to reveal its settings on the left side. Let's take a look at the name field as an example. Each field will allow you to customize their label and add a description, as well as make it a required field. In other words, users won't be able to submit the form without filling this in. Different fields will also have different settings that are specific to them, like the name field has this format setting that will allow you to change how you'd like users to enter their name in the name field. You can also click on the Advanced tab for more advanced settings for a field. Advanced settings can include things like changing the field size, adding in a placeholder text within the field, adding in a default value, and you can add a CSS class. You can also hide a field's label, and in some cases, require a unique answer to help curb spam entries. I want to customize our drop down menu, so let's click on that next. I'm going to update the fields label, and I'm going to rename the available choices. If you want to add more choices, you can click on the plus icon, or if you want to delete a choice, click on the minus icon. My drop down is now customized, but remember, I wanted the user to be able to write in their answer if they selected a specific choice in this drop down field. In my case, one of my choices is social media influencer so I want to know who that is specifically. I want them to be able to write their answer in the single line text field, but I only want this field to appear if they select the social media influencer choice from the dropdown field. To do this, we're going to use Smart Conditional Logic. I'm going to click on the single line text field and I'm going to customize the label. To apply Conditional Logic to this field, we're going to click on the Smart Logic tab at the top and click on the toggle to enable it. When using conditional logic, you're basically creating a rule that this field has to follow. So in this case, this is the rule we're creating. Show this field if the answer to the drop-down field 
which is now called How Did You Hear About Us, is Social Media Influencer. This way, this single line text field will only appear if the user selects this choice. In addition to customizing your fields, it's also important to configure the settings for your form overall. This can include configuring spam protection and security, email notifications and confirmations, so let's head over to the settings tab on the left side. The first tab you'll see is the general tab where you can edit your form's name, add a description and tags for it, customize the text inside the submit button, as well as the text that appears inside the button while the form is being processed. You can also click on the advanced tab to reveal additional settings, such as fields for additional CSS classes, along with more advanced options too. If you click on the spam protection and security tab on the left, you'll be able to enable any of the various security settings available, like our built-in spam protection, or external protections like a Kismet, or any of the available CAPTCHA. You can also use Google's reCAPTCHA to protect your form. You can find links to all of our CAPTCHA and reCAPTCHA video tutorials in the video description below. You can also make use of our filtering options, which allow you to filter entries either based on country, keywords, or both. But let's now focus on setting up our form's email notification settings to make sure that you're properly being notified when you receive a new form entry. Click on the Notifications tab on the left, and let's go through each field. In the Send to Email Address field, Enter the email address that notifications will be sent to. This is automatically set to your website's admin email address. You can write in as many email addresses as you want in this field. Just be sure to separate each one with a comma. If you'd like for users to receive a copy of this email notification, you can use the email field smart tag. Click on the Show Smart Tags text on the right corner of the field and select Email. This will automatically add the smart tag for the corresponding email field in your form. In the email subject line, write in what you'd like the email notification subject line to be. In the from name field, write in whichever name you'd like these emails to be sent from. In the from email field, write in the address that your emails will be sent from. The admin email smart tag will be in this field by default, but you can change it to whatever you'd like. If you enter an email address that doesn't match your domain name, you may see the following warning appear. Notifications from your site may still be delivered even if the From Email field address doesn't match your site's domain, but some email service providers might flag them as spam or block them entirely. If you run into this problem, you can use a plugin like WP Mail SMTP to fix it. Be sure to check out WPMailSMTP.com for more information. In the Reply To field, enter an email address you'd like any replies sent to the email notification to be sent to. Finally, in the Email Message field, you can include a message in the email notification as well, especially if you're setting it up so that users will also receive a copy of this notification. Currently, the Email Message field contains the All Field Smart tag. This means that a copy of all field and answers that the user filled in the form will be included in the message portion of the email notification. You can also optionally apply conditional logic to the email notification in a scenario where, for example, you only want the email notification to be sent if certain conditions in the form are met. In the Advanced section, you can enable settings that will allow things like adding uploaded files as attachments to the email notification and including a copy of the entry as a CSV file attachment. You can create multiple email notifications for a single field depending on your needs. You can click on the Add New Notification button on the top right corner to create another one in addition to what you just set up. Now that our spam protection and email notification settings have been configured, all we need to do is set up our confirmation settings, so click on the Confirmations tab on the left. On this page, you can customize what kind of confirmation the user will see after they submit the form, either a message, show them a different page, or redirect them to a different URL altogether. If you choose Message, you can use the available text box to write in whatever message you'd like, you can also choose to have the page automatically scroll to the confirmation message and to show a preview of the user's entry after the confirmation message. If you choose Show Page, you can select from any pages currently available on your WordPress site. And if you select Go to URL, Redirect, you can write in the URL of the site you'd like your visitors to be redirected to. Like the email notifications, you can create multiple confirmations by clicking on the Add New Confirmation button on the top right, depending on your needs. When you're done with everything, 
click on the Save button on the top right corner of the form builder. If you'd like to preview your form, click on the Preview button at the top of the page. This will open a new tab that will contain a preview of the form you just created. All we need to do now is add our form to our site. You can click on the Embed button at the top of the page and either select an existing page to add your form to or create a new page altogether. For our example, let's create a brand new page. Click the Create New Page button, then give this new page a name, and click the Let's Go button. Once the form appears on the block editor and you're ready to publish, click on the Publish button on the top right corner of the page, click it again when it appears again, and you're done. If you'd like to view entries that have been submitted, return to your WordPress dashboard and go to WP Forms and then Entries. On this page, you'll see a data graph tracking the entries all of your forms have received over a 30-day period. You can adjust this time period by clicking on the drop-down field on the right side above the graph. To view the entries for a specific form, click the form name from the table below. The next page will display all entries this particular form has received. If you'd like to view the full details for a specific entry, click on the View action on the right side of the table, and the next page will have the entry in its entirety. And that's all there is to it. You now know how to create your very first contact form in WP Forms. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit WPForms.com and check out our documentation page, where you can find step-by-step -step written guides for all of our features, add-ons, and more. You can also join our WP Forms VIP circle on Facebook to learn even more tips and tricks, as well as be part of the growing WP Forms community. If you need any extra technical help, please visit our contact page and reach out to our support team.